Before the pandemic started, I was very ambitious. I was a social butterfly. But when the pandemic started, I became very complacent. I definitely became complacent mostly in my faith. I was really having a hard time putting in the effort. I didn't even come back to church for 16 months, at least after church was open, everybody was coming back. I just didn't want to put in the effort. I was complacent to watch podcasts and listen to stuff at home. So I decided uh, one time that I was just going to come back to church. Katie Bailey actually was talking and speaking that day about life's choices and I was very overwhelmed by how much I missed being here and the love that I was shown by everybody here. I actually couldn't believe that I had forsaken doing that for so long and I just had a strong desire to come back every week then than I had since. So I made a decision to uh, try to better my health and I did some research and looked into some natural supplements and unfortunately they just did not agree with my body. And I had taken them for about eight days and I was home alone, working from home, and all of a sudden my heart just started racing terribly and escalating and it just would not stop. I was scared to death. So I ended up calling 911. I got in the ambulance and they said my blood pressure was 203. They rushed me to the hospital. They gave me medicine to bring down my blood pressure. They also found out that I was extremely dehydrated. So they gave me medicine to take care of me and to bring me home. But that evening, this experience that I had of being at home and so scared triggered a panic in me that was absolutely horrible. Katie Bailey came and just comforted me and stayed with me and she just, I can't possibly articulate what a blessing that was to have her with me and praying over me and part of the body of Christ with me at that time. I was just so desperate for help and direction and she was just a wonderful friend to me. And um, unfortunately, two days later when I went back for my follow-up to the doctor, the doctor um, himself, they called 911 because my blood pressure shot up to 202 again. So I'm sharing this to uh, explain that I was fine. Everything in my life was fine. I was complacent. I was content. I was happy just doing what I wanted to do. And this just spiraled me into a state of mind that I have never been in. When I tell you uh, the nights that were so long for me and the days were just so filled with fear, <clears throat> my body was just reacting to something. My electrolytes were thrown off. Everything was horrible. And um, the panic attacks would continue. And I probably had about a month of them. And they would come in waves. And the best way I can describe it is if how you would feel in that moment if all of a sudden somebody busted in and held a gun to your head. You've gone from being completely normal to panic, you know, and fear. And <clears throat> it's just a very um, hard thing to describe. And unless you go through it, you don't understand. And I don't want you to go through it because, you know, it's really tough. But um, if I were to say to you that I was living day by day, or hour by hour, that would be, that would fall short of the real meaning. I was literally living moment to moment. So the fear was, you know, something that would come over me at times where it was unpredictable. I wouldn't know when it was hit, gonna hit. And this one Sunday morning in particular, I, I was having a lot of problems at home. My heart was racing. I'm like, you can't go to church. You're just gonna have to stay home and rest. And, one of the, the biggest things that I had felt during all my time with my panic was just to do it. Just do it afraid, no matter what, just go. And this day was no different. And I walked into church and I sat down and my heart was just pounding. It was just full of fear. And I was like, God, please, you know, help me not feel so fearful. And I just felt extremely drawn, like somebody's just pulling me right out of the pew to go up and talk to Randy right before the service and ask him if he would have the congregation lay hands on me because I was so desperate for help and to have relief from this panic and terror feelings that I was having all the time. And when I got up to Randy, he said, you know, of course he would do that for me. And I pulled him to the side and within like 10 seconds, the praise team had started to sing. <clears throat> and the most wonderful, amazing thing happened is because, sorry, <laughs> I'm, I get a little emotional. I was, 
I was so complacent in my faith and I didn't put God first. And that day God put me absolutely first. Before Randy could even facilitate talking to the congregation to come lay hands on me, Tina Blatt had paused and asked the very thing that I had asked Randy to do. And Tina and Randy had not communicated. That was all God. They loved me so much in that moment that he would put me in the center and have everybody come down and lay hands on me. I felt so loved in that moment to have the body of Christ come and pray over me. And when Donna Reber prayed for me specifically, I felt this huge peace wash over me. And I knew right then and there that I was gonna really step up my faith and that I was gonna give all that I had to God. And it is so important that we speak our truth of what is happening. It is okay to not be okay. It is okay to be honest. It is okay to ask for help. If I hadn't asked for help that day, I, I believe I would be still suffering at that level. By me having the courage to ask Randy to have the congregation pray, and the way all of that happened, it has enabled me to not feel alone. So when I do still struggle, and I have some panic come, the level that I suffer with is so much less because he showed me in that moment that I am not alone. It is okay to ask for help. 